Dogumentary TV, producing the best breed documentaries. I think German Shepherd's a great dog because of their massive amounts of versatility. Uh, they're an uh, extremely versatile dog in the aspect that they can do all kinds of work for people. And they also can make a, a, you know, a great home pet. And um, you know, they're, they're used from everything from range of a seeing eye dog, which is uh, you know, an extreme sound temperamented dog, uh, to a working dog for police or military or, or a sport or competition dog, and a, a everything in between. My name is Chris Taylor. Um, I'm a breeder of German Shepherd dogs. I have been uh, out of my own personal kennel for the last uh, 15 years um, with Von Taylorhoff Kennels. Um, I, my family has a history of, of breeding as well uh, on my, my mother's side. Uh, she comes from Germany and been kind of raised and grown up around uh, the German Shepherd dog my entire life. Uh, my job every day, 80, 100, plus hours a week is uh, is training and working with uh, it within my kennel and it, which is German Shepherds. I train all breeds of dogs, uh, but probably because of my background with the German Shepherd, you know, my involvement within the breed, uh, I'm very well known to train German Shepherds. So uh, the mass majority of the breeds uh, of the dogs we work with are from the German Shepherd breed. Uh, the German Shepherd was obviously created in, um, by Max von Stefanitz, who's the founder of the breed. And um, obviously, at the time of the inception of the breed, the, the diet was raw food or even sometimes cooked food, but we, we didn't have kibbles back then. Uh, so any of the dogs were, were typically fed, uh, you know, d direct raw food diets. Um, and uh, while it wasn't really well known at the time, you know, what they were doing nutritionally so much, um, they were onto something by, by staying that way. But at that, at that time, even our diets didn't have uh, quite the preservatives or the steroids or the uh, MSGs or any, any of the other you know, it, it, things we have put into our, our foods today um, that they did then. So uh, uh, the, the diets subsequently were, were, were predominantly healthier. You know, you had a lot of the goat farmers, sheep farmers, which German shepherds were shepherd dogs. And that was a fantastic protein source, had fantastic green tripe source. Um, and a lot of the, the farmers, you know, uh, fed that directly to the dogs. And, uh, and chickens as well, extremely common, uh, least less expensive you know, for the farmers to, ha to, to feed their dogs as well. So it's pretty natural for them to have that. Uh, I feel feeding all dogs a raw diet is a good idea. It's, their, it's what their natural anatomy is. Um, designed to digest and um, uh, we haven't even through our eugenics of uh, selective breeding we haven't done much to alter the uh, um, digestive system in the anatomy um, very little I would say if anything at all in most breeds um, but the the dog's genetics um, and natural anatomy is designed to eat a raw diet I think the biggest benefit to feeding a raw diet to a German Shepherd dog or, or working dog in general is um, the amount of energy they're able to produce from that diet um, and the usefulness of all the um, calories that are within that diet. There's not a lot of empty calories in a raw diet. Actually, there's, there's very little to no empty calories in a raw diet. Uh, versus uh, a kibble has a tremendous amount of empty calories. I always use the analogy of, of uh, kibbles are, are kind of like a fast food restaurant diet, and uh, a raw diet is kind of something you would uh, have a nutritionist develop for you at a, at a gym um, where you, you don't have a lot of waste um, in your diet. My advoc advocacy for raw food is just that um, I don't really like to see how much uh, the dogs are affected by uh, eating so many preservatives and uh, um, an unnatural diet. And the reality is for dogs, even the top of the end kibbles are just different grades of fast foods, in my opinion. It's kind of like comparing the difference between McDonald's and In-N-Out. Um, they're still not really a healthy food. Um, they're, they're not natural for the dogs, and there's tons of empty calories and lots of preservatives. Um, they're not good for us. They're not good for anything else. Every doctor that any human would go to would tell you to avoid preservatives and eat more fresh foods. And uh, it's kind of odd to me that many vets don't recommend fresh foods for dogs. Yeah, I made the switch from kibble to raw um, 
primarily as a, as a health concern. I, I had uh, do dogs that were having some, some issues with the feeding. You know, you were seeing it in the coats, you're seeing dry skins, you're seeing a lot of allergies. And I started looking into specifically what allergies were um, and what were really causing them. And once you got past like the flea and tick allergies or, and, and things that can come environmentally, uh, different grasses, pollens, things like that, it, it came down to food. And um, I started thinking, okay, dogs are allergic to chicken or dogs are allergic to potatoes or some certain starches and things of that nature. And uh, more and more I came to realize that it wasn't the actual uh, chicken that the dogs are allergic to, it was the preservatives that the chickens were that was used to preserve the chicken in the kibble. And, uh, and when they changed the context of the food by baking it um, and they used all the preservatives to keep, uh, especially the meat products, um, then I, I realized it wasn't chicken, it wasn't beef, it wasn't duck, it wasn't buffalo, it wasn't any of those the actual proteins it was the preservatives that kept the proteins and that was what was causing all the allergies and the issues uh, to the dogs and you'd see it obviously if you're allergic to something anybody that's drinking a you know has lactose intolerance even in a slight you know amount you drink a cup of warm milk before you go to bed that's because of your intolerance to you know to the lactose and it puts you to sleep or drops your energy level and uh and that was very um much the case when it came to working with dogs and you saw they didn't have the energy level uh that they did and as soon as i started uh, developing a raw diet for them and, and you know it, um investigating it more and I come from a strong athletics background where nutrition is a very important factor and uh, I, I literally just kind of incorporated that and then started investigating um, you know how dogs digest and, and using a little bit of my biology background and and, uh, and um, uh, noticing the difference in effects of as I started to evolve in my raw diet uh, to, to develop what we use today it um, it started making tremendous strides. You know, I, I stopped having any of the allergic reactions to the dogs. The, the stools were smaller. They didn't smell. Uh, the dog's energy level was through the roof. I didn't have the teeth issues. Um, it, it, as you've probably seen in the videos later, the dog's teeth are very, very clean. We don't brush the dog's teeth ever. Uh, we don't ever formally clean their teeth. They, they eat the raw food. The bones in the raw food help keep the teeth clean. And uh, and it's, uh, it's just, uh, we, we've basically eliminated so many health issues from it uh, that it's uh, it's been just a humongous advantage. I'm not saying it's the only thing, but it's definitely huge. Um, our formula that we make with our company is Wild Instincts Raw is um, more of a complete diet formula. Uh, we find that there's there's still a necessity for some of the other ingredients that we are able to put in uh, beyond uh, uh, like a barf diet or a prey model only diet. Um, so we have added some other ingredients into ours that we feel create a more benefit for the dog as well. Um, obviously we stay with, you know, we have certain proteins which include bone, um, and organ meat. And we do get the majority of our, uh, dog's vegetation and digestive enzymes, which I feel is, is probably the most important thing going today. Um, um within a dog's diet is, is having a balanced digestive enzymes. It helps keep the, you know, the pancreas um, healthy and the rest of the digestive system healthy, healthy and capable of processing and digesting all these nutrients. Um, and so we include uh, several key ingredients beyond the proteins, beyond the bone, beyond the regular organ meat like a, a liver, kidney, heart, uh, lung, those types of things. The green tripe, I think, is probably the most, uh, necess um, most necessary ingredient we have. Um, and the reason, again, like I said, is, is primarily the digestive enzymes that are that have, um, are coming out of that green tripe that we get. Um, it's not found any really anywhere else. Um, obviously, we add some probiotics and prebiotics in, in that as well. Um, those are important. We use typically use a goat kefir, um, and uh, for for us outside of that, like I said, the, the green tripe is is probably what makes a giant separation in that and how we utilize it. Um, makes a big separation uh, between uh, our raw and, and many or most others. Um, then our vegetation mix uh, what, that we use in there is able to be processed um, without the green tripe and the digestive enzymes in the green tripe and, and how, it's, how it's processed by us. Um, the, the vegetation's basically useless. You know, when I see vegetables and, and, and fruits and ingredients, the mass majority of that is just extract because they're not capable of digesting it because the dogs it, within that diet, they don't have included uh, digestive enzymes. So, and the raw food business kind of, it grew and it was an inception as I started uh, creating my own kennel. Um, 
and right away I started seeing kind of the downfalls of feeding kibbles and different uh, variations of kibbles that I was trying at the time. And, uh, and I got introduced to the idea of, of raw feeding diet uh, by my friend and mentor, Tom Payne. Uh, he originally uh, discussed it with me and, and that uh, it, it triggered something in me and then it became an obsession for probably about the last 14 years. The raw food diet is optimum for the training rigors that our dogs go through because it just helps them, you know, maintain the energy to to push farther and harder, and uh, they don't lose time due to uh, any allergies or reactions or dietary insufficiencies uh, that you would have on a, a junk food diet or a kibble diet or anything like that. That, that you know, any athlete if they were on a a junk food diet would uh, or a fast food diet would would definitely have starting having de detrimental effects with that and, and uh, it's basically um, you know keeping their nutrition on a very strong level helps um, with their muscular system their, their uh, skeletal system uh, they're getting appropriate amounts of calcium so they're all getting very strong bones uh, especially with the exercise that we do is high impact exercises um, that, that definitely helps them harden up their bones and then uh, we do a ton of conditioning work and uh, build their muscle uh, content with the appropriate protein quantities, and uh, um, it's just uh, it's it's been uh, the right kind of diet to allow them to continue to push every single day, day in doubt. Um, temperament uh, and emotion certainly can be affected by a raw diet. Um, we quite often help prescribe the, the diet to people who have um, temperament issues with their dogs. Um, Again, getting back to allergies are, are a high issue when it comes to, or a, a, a very popular issue uh, when it comes to dogs. Um, especially we're here in Southern California, we deal with a lot of uh, a lot of clients that have uh, allergy issues. And when I see a temperament issue and an allergy issue, uh, a lot of times that is they are directly correlating and working together. Um, and when we solve the allergy issue, the dog's not feeling bad anymore. He's feeling better. He's feeling happier. He's feeling healthier. And you start seeing a lot of that being a, a lot of the um, temperamental issues uh, subsiding with the, with the allergies. Uh, a raw food diet has direct correlation to the dog's coat. Uh, having the essential oils um, that are necess necessary in the diet, uh, especially the omega-3s and fats, um, are directly correlated to the dog's coat and the health of the dog's coat. And with the absence of allergies, the dog's skin is healthier. We don't have the coat issues, the dryness of skin, the itchiness, uh, the rashes, uh, the hot spots, things like that are, aren't quite as common um, when they're on the raw diet. Uh, raw dye also has great benefits to the dog's skeletal system as well as their tendons and their ligaments. Um, the amount of calcium uh, that's put into the percentages of a, a good balanced raw diet is directly affecting uh, dog's muscular system or uh, skeletal system and, uh, and their tendons and ligaments. The dog's teeth are benefited greatly by a raw diet. Uh, they don't have so much of the buildup that you have with a kibble, uh, so they stay pretty clean. Everything is washed out quite easily, and the bone within the raw diet uh, helps uh, create the little little miniature toothbrushes, basically, to keep kind of a lot of the tartar and plaque off of them. Uh, digestion is critical when you're talking about a raw diet. I think, again, getting back to green tripe and the... Uh, digestive enzymes found in the green tripe are absolutely essential. Without the digestive enzymes, uh, you know, dogs can process bone and they can process some proteins. Uh, the rest of the diet is is, uh, is has to be obtained, or the rest of the digestive enzymes has to be obtained within the diet. Uh, the pancreas can create very small amounts of the other digestive enzymes necessary, uh, but predominantly it's it's being filled back up by the diet of the dog's eating. And so uh, the ingredient of green tripe and, and the digestive enzymes found in the green tripe um, is, is essential. But uh, again, essentially the, the dog's they can't create this on their own, so being a predator, they're stealing that or those digestive enzymes from another animal that can't create that. For, for example, other herbivores that eat grasses or eat vegetation, they have larger uh, multiple tract stomachs and a long digestive system, and they can break down um, greens you know, much easier than the very short digestive tract of a dog. A uh, dog has high acidic and, um, and a very short digestive tract, uh, so they can, you know, 
uh, digest and tear apart proteins without too much of a problem. But greens are, are, are very, very difficult for dogs to digest. So being able to take those greens that are already pre-digested from another animal, uh, that's, that's just part of the physiology of dogs. The big physiological differences between a show line German Shepherd and a working line German Shepherd are basically how they're created to move. Uh, a show line is created to be more of a gating dog and a moving dog, and a working line is typically created to be more of a jumping dog, a driving dog, a striking dog. Um, uh, so they're more made for sprinting and, and gaining more short burst distances. Not that they can't go long distances, but they're going long distances more based upon their desire and their drives than they are based upon their uh, physiology. One of the issues behind a lot of the show lines that I see uh, is weakness of tendons, uh, especially you see it in their pastures, you see it in their hawks. Uh, and I think a raw diet can strongly benefit that by firming those up at an earlier age. Uh, a lot of times you see that in, in puppies have very weak pastures, very weak tendons, and they need to tighten up their tendons. And uh, a lot of the you know breeders and, and show enthusiasts they'll wait and they'll they'll expect that those will firm up as they mature, and they they kind of do sometimes, uh, but uh, the, they can strongly benefit from a raw diet um, by and have them firming up a little bit quicker. Uh, typical life expectancy of a German Shepherd is 10 to 12 years-ish. Uh, you can see dogs push on a lot farther than that. Uh, and that, A lot of times we can argue that it depends on lines, and it somewhat does, I think. And it, it depends on genetics, period. And that's just like uh, you or I or anybody else that has that in their family. Uh, they have longer genetics, uh, lo long, more longevity in their genetics, and others have shorter longevity. And um, But we have found definitely a raw diet definitely helps expand that. Um, just through um, organ health is probably the predominant benefactor of uh, a raw diet, meaning they're not having the stresses that are having that you'll have, you know, processing um, uh, a lot of preservatives every day. Uh, that, that takes a tremendous strain on the liver and the kidneys and the heart. And, uh, and, and we see dogs break down from that quite early. Uh, cancer is another thing you'll see from eating a large amount of preservatives in the diet. Of course, that's, the, that's probably the most obvious one uh, versus a raw diet, especially a, a more natural raw diet. doesn't have so many preservatives in it or any preservatives in it at all. The only thing we use to preserve our food is freezing it. Uh, so like the, the first dog you saw come out today was Merrick. Uh, he's been raw fed for probably the last year, a little more than a year, year and a half of his life. Uh, he's a two and a half year old dog now. Um, for the last year and a half of his life, he's been strictly raw fed. Uh, he had been on some freeze dried raw before that and some varied kibbles and some raw as well, but he, he wasn't really consistent with that before. Uh, you've seen him uh, mature really nicely. He's added a, a bunch of muscle. Uh, part of that is a conditioning for sure, but uh, ability, ability to have the nutri nutrients delivered into his body uh, in the appropriate amounts has allowed him to, to add that muscle. His bone is and his bone density has, has definitely hardened out and, and become much nicer. Uh, he's always, um, you know, from the inception of starting to get the raw diet, all of his uh, his tendons have firmed up very nicely and strongly, and so we see a very strong tendon dog. Yeah. The second dog we brought out was Cask. Uh, Cask is turning three in November, and uh, same thing. He has been raw fed since he since I uh, obtained him at 11 months old, and he's been exclusively raw fed. Uh, again, you see the tremendous coat, you see the great teeth, you see the excellent bone and the muscle structure, and uh, just a very sound dog. He's never had, you know, we, we don't have the skin allergies or any of those problems. Or, uh, the third dog we had out, the female, her name was Anna. Anna was about the same timeline of raw feeding as, as Merrick. Um, she actually had you know, a couple years of her life before on, on some uh, higher end kibbles and, and uh, various raw formulas and freeze dry formulas. But for, again, for the last about year and a half of her life, she's been strictly raw. Uh, uh, seen a, a great change in her, especially being she's been a mother a couple times over, uh, to, and to go right through you know pretty large size litters without any issues at all, plenty of milk, plenty of ability to feed, um, and, and always having an abundance of that, and, uh, and and again bouncing right back from that. The, the weaning process hasn't hasn't had any alteration whatsoever. Walter's, yeah, been raw fed since he was uh, born, or well, since he's been weaned, actually. Uh, he's out of our, our kennel. 
but we've definitely had them bulk up and, and build some bone density and some muscle density. Yeah, raw diet is incredibly important for a puppy. Uh, in my opinion, the, 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 their growth it allows them to grow at a more natural rate where I think uh, a large amount of uh, kibble, um, you can have too many um, passed down steroids, preservatives, um, growth hormones, things like that, using the diet that passes right on down to the to the puppy's uh, digestive tract, and and it gets absorbed. And uh, concurrently, I see those dogs, you know, grow at uh, unnatural rates, and, and then they're growing in healthy rates. As you saw in the, the last puppy that uh, Gabe brought out, the seven months old, he's a very nice size for the age. He hasn't grown too fast. He's not having the issues like uh, panoastiitis or any of the growing issues that you have in dogs that are too large too fast. And uh, he's had no skin allergies or ear infections or anything of that sort. Uh, he's, he's been able to be a pretty healthy dog, and it's uh, and uh, we've been able to quite easily keep you know parasitic uh, things under control as well. Yeah. Again, the German Shepherd is an extremely versatile breed, uh, and the uh, great benefit from having a raw diet allows them to be all that they can be, and uh, allows them to have the energy to, to be that great working dog or to put in those long hours as a service animal, um, and uh, and keep them going. And uh, I think it's for, for any dog that's going to have long hours or um, uh, a high energy output, it's, uh, it's nutrition just as anything for anyone or any athlete, whether they be canine or human, four-legged or two, they need, uh, they need the nutrition that needs to be appropriate for them. And even if your dog's not a working dog, I, I feel you know health and nutrition is important to every person. It should be important to everybody's dog as well. If you love your pets, care for them. They are not able to make the nutritional choices for themselves. You have to make those choices for them. And uh, if, if you really care for them and, and love them, you'll give them the best nutritional values that they can have. And uh, I believe that that comes from a raw diet.